I'm again with Richard Verrill. Hello, Richard. Good morning to you. You told me that you have some woodland and you are managing it in the old traditional way of coppicing. This has been planted about 30 years ago, but unusually it was all oak, not mixed hardwoods, is what they do today. Different sizes, there's little tiny miserable things, and then you'll see one or two big ones, because we've got the Forestry Commission uh, advising us on this. Oh, right. They're very interested to see it coppice properly. The other side of this roadway, that has been cut four years. Right. That's four years growth. Four years growth. So yeah. we go further that way. Um, oh, sorry. It's all right. Closer. <laughs> Duck round here. Yeah, I might trip over the brambles. They all seem to leap out and grab you, brambles. Yes, that, oddly enough, again, this has been cut slightly longer than that, and yet that block, you see how much taller that is? Whereas that is quite thick and strong, look. Yes. But that's again just to do with the, the weather you got after you cut it, all these things. All those things play in. They do. And so you you thinned out the uh, the oak trees there. We have yes. The forestry commission said we ought to take some more out. Actually. Oh right. We haven't taken enough. And they're beautiful trees. I have they're to say. They're nice. Well, they're probably two hundred years old at least. Wow. So so this land has been managed for a long time. Oh well, because part of the estate they had a a routine. They'd cut round the estate. We've got seven thousand acres. Yes. You've got a fair bit of wood to manage. So you cut it in rotation like a crop, and it's over 30 or 40 years, not one year. Yeah. There's another interesting thing I want to show you. I've got a friend who has a map of this area in the 1800s. Wow. And on his map, this is field. Oh, gosh. And my great-grandfather used to farm about, I don't know, a quarter of a mile there at Sands Farm in the 1800s. Wow. And I reckon he was probably the last person to actually farm this bit, because they say he's about 200 years old. And yeah. it probably got too difficult to farm, so they let it fall down the woods. Or they planted it, I don't know. But I want to show you these furrows, if I can. Yeah, which yeah. proves to me that it was ploughed. So, oh right, furrows within the wood. Absolutely, I thought they were ditches, but they're not. So oh, there's, no, there's no um, wood banks and things to give the delineage no. here, because it may have been fields. Oh, I'm sure this was field. Yeah. Right up to probably where the footpath is. Oh, That's right. where the old road used to go to Sands Farm anyway. Now we're sort of blanked off here a bit. <laughs> Look, I don't know whether you can see. That's can a... you see the ridge and furrow there? You've got a ridge and a furrow and a ridge and a furrow and another one. If you get in there, yeah. they are what we call rod lands. Rod pole perch. But... Rod is five and a half yards. Ah, yes, of course. And if it's heavy land, they ploughed them in rod lands. If it was very heavy land, they ploughed them in half rod lands. I see. So they'd be twice as thick as that. But these are parallel, parallel uh, lines. furrows. They are not drainage ditches. Right. So I reckon my grandfather was probably the last one the to last one. plough that. Isn't that a, an amazing feeling? Yeah. It's Your quite connection with the land. Extraordinary, isn't it? But this regrowth on this lot is extraordinary. Because so that hasn't been cut as long as the one behind us that we left. Right. Three, four... Four years, I don't know, time goes. So you've got hazel in with ash and oak? Yeah, of course, hazel used to be grown for making hurdles, um, the old house panels, lath and plaster. They used to put a hurdle in there of hazel and plaster over yeah. there. Yeah, you'll find the old, they've got wooden square panels fill yes. up with the hazel. Yes. And then they put plaster and then, on that. Yeah. So they used them for thatched spar, all sorts of things they used hazel for. And of course, ash would be used for handles. Um, it's not much good. It's good for rails, but no good for posts because it rots off in a year. Right. But um, it all had its use, you see. Yes. And anything else they didn't use, they made it into faggots to burn in the house. Yeah. Nothing was ever wasted. No. No, it's, it's, uh, and it's just amazing to see it carrying on. Well. It, because, we, you know, we're losing so much of our old traditions and our old absolutely. industries. But this, I'm amazed how we did have two hives of wild, not hives, colonies of wild bees. Right. There was a tree, I know this isn't a footpath, but I better have it down in case it falls on somebody. So I hooked a big tractor on it, cut the remains of the root off it, and hoiked it down, got off to take the chain off. What was that? There was a bees colony about 30 foot up in a woodpecker hole oh, that I never saw. 
but they were quite amenable and they lived there for quite a long time but I assume they're still buried in the undergrowth and then we had another one up here up in a hole in, in my I think I think that's gone I'm not, <laughs> they have a habit of moving on you met my brother-in-law the other day didn't you he and I used to do all this fencing and the underwooded but we're both getting too ancient and decrepit <laughs> and the younger members of the family are not so keen on doing it actually. Ah. I think this is the last of my efforts <laughs> and this is sufficient to keep the deer out oh that's wonderful stuff is it it doesn't have to be I don't know whether it moves and frightens them right I oh, think it's amazing yeah, so as you can see there's still a sign of a furrow this more weathered this end but the, the the furrows are here if you look for them you can just see them it's a question of knowing what to look for absolutely, isn't it absolutely. as an experienced farmer yeah. you've got the right eye yeah you know a, a lay person like me is just learning well yes I think my tree man must have taken the fence down because this one he I think his tractor broke down and he hadn't been back to put it up ah. I ought to get a daughter wound up put this up otherwise the deer will come and eat those fresh growth yes because I heard 200 or more come through here gosh and and where do they come from how do they they don't cross the a24 oh they do frequently do they uh, not lately but I have picked up as many as four dead ones just outside the old barn nursery gosh all in the same spot of road oh right all rushing across before oh yeah well they get a bit they don't know they stand there bang <laughs> oh blimey I, I'm a sort of what you call an agricultural wrecker I used to go and claim any carcass cause if I don't want it the dogs will yes and you've seen how voracious they are yes yeah, look at this is regrowth this was all cut right down like that right flat on the ground flat on the ground and here and it look is look at the regrowth there look at that so so for one tree you've got 20 or 30. it's amazing it's amazing nature is an incredible thing especially, it certainly is especially when it's managed that's right of course as I said there's no profit in it there's no money in it not to the end of the day if you you know capitalize some of the wood some of these see, it may look a lovely tree yes so it is but you'd only get one beam out of that for a, a modern house oh uh, right if you want to well if you take it square it yes you'll be lucky if you get a beam a foot square out of that and what would a single tree these days retail at well or not much actually. not much um, it so isn't till you cut it and get it on the ground and saw it up when it, it's added value added value yes value so you've got added. two 200 years no, that's right for nothing really for, yeah oh, there's some rather nice trees here but it's certainly now we can if we want there is a diversion we could go back I mean this is much of a muchness now yes but the further you go north I think we started right down the corner about 15 years ago when we first bought it and we've progressed we've gone round in a circle you see yes right the way round, and then we come back down here and then we've come back along here and then we started going back that way we sort of figure yeah figure eight figure eight yeah sort of and it's just I can feel water in the air that's right yeah if you look so it's all grown almost from the ground upwards yes if we poke, poke our camera through through the foliage back to it's amazing isn't it so that would have been the stump where it was that's right cut and now look at that it's an amazing tree the hazel isn't it oh yes yes very resilient well so you've got to cut it to save its life if you let it grow we'd have some hazels that big here 100 years old wow and they they get heavy fall over uproot yeah. the stump stem, whatever you like and then it dies and then it dies. if you cut it off even if there's only a little bit of life left that it'll come back it's amazing yeah this was when we bought the wood we well, so about 15 years ago originally so i was quite keen then and there was a little scruffy black hole here literally a little tiny black hole with well stinking black hole with rotten branches and everything so we got the digger in and hooked it out made an island which you'll see in a minute um and we've got quite a nice pond there now for wildlife but it's got all sorts of uh, water lilies how can we go around there without falling in the pond yes i don't want you to fall in no, richard I don't want to fall in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no but how lovely a friend of mine gave me the water lilies from Petworth I think they came oh right and, and that, all that is natural must have come in on a bird's legs I think oh. it's an oxygenating weed and it was so thick it got so thick I thought what am I going to do with that I know I'll put some fish in there and they the carp have got going look they're gradually clearing and clearing and oh, clearing. is that what the carp do grass it, carp though 
I think they're even at the bulrushes, so some of the bulrushes keep falling over. <laughs> so I reckon some quite big carp in there now. <laughs> well, I haven't seen any yet, but there's lots of little ones. Well, Richard, it's been, a, it's been a joy to have a wander around your woodland and well, learn a bit about coppicing. Well, I hope and it means something to you. Yeah, no, and all the different stages, learning about how the, the, the uh, cutting sparingly through the canopy so that light comes in to That's provide right. the new growth. That's right. And the, the, the biodiversity of different species. And then to see your pond as well. Yes, well. And it's good to see the, the tradition continuing even though as you say there's not a lot of money in it there's one, one interesting thing when we first dug the pond we didn't have it very deep about 18 inches um, and then we found it was all being taken over by the bulrushes right. the whole thing was covered so I learnt from somewhere that it'll only grow in 18 inches of water beyond that it won't oh, so we've got shallows over there where the bulrushes where are the bull and this side is quite deep too deep for the bulrushes also too deep for the heron to stand in to catch my fish because ah. they like 18 inches of water, they don't want any more than that. <laughs> so we've got shallows for the, the yeah. heron round the edge and for the little creepy crawlies and deep water for the fish to hide in. Clever, clever. There's a science to all of this, ah. isn't there? Or just old knowledge, maybe. Yeah. Just old and shared knowledge. Well, that's right, that's right. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure. It's been, it's been a joy. I hope it works. Yeah, well... Do join us again on another on another exploration. But for now, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again. Goodbye. Bye. That's great. Isn't it?